Hey, this is Steve with the Sunday Story Podcast. Um, I'm going to make a series of videos, I believe, for my uh, patrons. Uh, this is the first one. I'm going to release this to everybody. Uh, but I, w I will be releasing some of these to my patrons where we go through the Enchiridion one reading at a time and kind of think about what Epictetus is saying and how we might apply it to our daily lives. So that's the plan. Um, this translation is the uh, George Long translation, and there's a link to it there uh, on the top of the video. Uh, I'll put the link in the show description as well. And this is Enchiridion number one, uh, one that I'm sure uh, you've heard many times. Uh, of some things, well, of things, <laughs> some are in our power and others are not. In our power, our opinion, movement toward a thing, desire, aversion, which is turning from a thing, and in a word, whatever are our own acts. Not in our power are the body, property, reputation, offices, and in a word, whatever are not our own acts. And the things in our power are by nature free, not subject to restraint nor hindrance. But the things not in our power are weak, slavish, subject to restraint, and in the control of others. Remember then that if you think the things which are by nature slavish to be free, and the things which are in the power of others to be your own, you will be hindered, you will lament, you will be disturbed, you will blame both gods and men. But if you think that only which is in your power to be your own, and if you think that what is others, as it really is, belongs to another, no man will ever compel you, no man will hinder you, you will never blame any man, you will accuse no man, you will do nothing involuntarily. No man will harm you, you will have no enemy, for you will not suffer any harm. If then you desire such great things, remember that you must not lay hold of them with a small effort. But you must leave alone some things entirely, and postpone others for the present. But if you wish these things also, such great things, and power, and wealth, perhaps you will not gain even these very things, because you aim also at the former things. Certainly you will fail in those things through which alone happiness and freedom are secured. Straight away then practice saying to every harsh appearance, You are an appearance, and in no manner what you appear to be. Then examine it by the rules which you possess, and by this first and chiefly, whether it relates to the things which are in our power or to the things which are not in our power. And if it relates to anything which is not in our power, be ready to say that it does not concern you. So, my summary, if I were taking notes on this, only our will, our acts, are in our power fully. Uh, what we think about, uh, what we value, what we decide to try to do doesn't mean we'll succeed at doing it, but what we decide to try to do, those are those things are in our power. Over attachment to things outside of our power renders us vulnerable and prone to being upset, uh, disgruntled, or angry. If we think that things outside of ourselves are in our power, we will be unhappy and will blame others. And likewise, I think the same if you let others rule the things that you should be in control of, you will be upset. If you, if you get your opinions from other people rather than through your own thought processes, if you give your will away to the opinions of others, you ultimately uh, may fit in, but ultimately you will start to be unhappy. So, also then, to internalize all of this stuff is going to require a lot of effort and lifestyle changes. We can't just say we are learning this stuff and change nothing. That that doesn't mean anything. We, It's going to be a struggle. It's going to require some kind of cost on our end. We're going to have to give up some stuff. Uh, we cannot grow as a philosopher and pursue the typical goals of society at the same time. In the case of modern humanity, uh, I still have to make a living, so I'm going to have to <laughs> pursue the goals of society at the same time to some extent, but I uh, can cut back voluntarily on things like uh, the foods I eat, uh, the products I buy, the associations I keep. Examine... Um, well, I have a typo here, but examine the things that, that intimidate you. 
or the things that you're intimidated by, uh, whether it be um, something coming up at work or something that's that's bugging you that you have to do or something from the past that you regret and look at it and say, is this within my power to control? So if it's a decision you have to make soon, that decision is not is within your power. Maybe worry isn't the thing to do, but to look at it logically and try to make a decision. But if you're worried about what your boss is going to say to you tomorrow, that's beyond your control. If you're worried about something you did last year that you wish you hadn't done, that is out of your control. The past is out of your control. Um, you can see if there's something you can do to change the trajectory you're on now in the moment, but you can't change the past, so let that go. If the thing you're looking at is not in your power, then let it go. So how could we apply some of this? Well, we have to work hard. And what does that look like in the modern era? Probably daily practice. Um, that could be meditation or journaling. Um, practice of hardships to, to, to let go of things that kind of scare you. Maybe a lot of people like cold showers and things like that. Uh, you, you make your own decisions here. But uh, daily practice and not just reading because I know I'm good at saying, well, I'm going to do stoicism now and I put my nose in a book. But where this, where this meets reality is when it's applied. Stoicism it means nothing if it's just in here. It comes out through your hands, through your voice as you interact with reality. Chart your progress. Hey, I've been angry f fewer times this week. I have helped around the house more often. I have helped in my community more often than I would have. I, I'm less judgmental of others. Things like that you could watch and track to see if you are making progress. Make a habit of constantly asking yourself, is this in my power? And it sounds weird and foolish, but it, I think it's really necessary because I find myself failing at this a lot. I'll be worried about things like, for example, I as a teacher, not, a, not so much to my students, but I'm a science teacher and I run into ignorance all the time when it comes to science and downright rejection of science, especially here in the South where I live in the United States. And I have, I'm trying to realize when I can, I can try to give my point of view, but a lot of times it'd be like getting in a Twitter fight. I'm just going to entrench them in their views and, and, and it's not going to be any good for me to get mad. And so rather than getting mad, I try to reframe it and say, this is out of my power. Maybe I can make slow headway through my education as an instructor. Uh, but this entrenched ignorance is not in my power to control. Um, so I can now, tr what is within my power to control? Patience. I can learn patience. I can learn to understand that their opinion is not mine and it does not affect me, except for when they vote, but that's beyond here. Either. But you, you see what I mean. Um, and we can also try to start letting go of anxiety over things that are not in our power. And if we really do a good job at, the, at that, that'll be almost everything, right? <laughs> uh, almost nothing that, that worries us is in our power. But then we're, we're left with our core self that we need to worry about. And then we'll see uh, where our faults are and where we need to improve and um, and how we can how we can live the best lives we can. So that's the Enchiridion uh, number one. And uh, hopefully I can keep up with this. And in a week or so, we'll have the Enchiridion number two, where we can discuss uh, what Epictetus has to say there. Thanks for joining me and for your support. Seize the day. Carpe diem.